The Taipo was one of six schooners built in Milwaukee by Wolf and Davidson Company. She was a canal schooner, a ship type distinguished by a straight square stern, narrow beam, and typically built with three masts. Canal schooners were built to carry as much cargo as possible, but still fit through the canals connecting the lakes, such as the Welland Canal bypassing Niagara Falls. The Typo had a serious set of unfortunate mishaps before sinking in Lake Huron. On September 1, 1874, Typo ran aground at Eagle Harbor Island, causing hull damage valued at $500 to repair. On October 13, 1876, the city of Madison collided with Typo on Lake Michigan, and Typo suffered $1,000 in hull damages. On September 1, 1883, Typo ran aground again, this time on M. Hearst Island in Lake Ontario, and suffered $6,000 in damage. On May 8, 1884, Typo was lying in Oswego, New York Harbor, next to a river tug that caught on fire, but luckily Typo was saved by being towed away. On October 14, 1899, the steamer W.P. Ketchum collided with the Typo, damaging her badly enough that it caused Typo to sink instantly taking four of her seven crew members with her. Her final resting place is off of Presque Isle, Michigan, in about 180 feet of water. Jumping into the water, carrying around 250 pounds of gear, suddenly we're weightless and sliding down the anchor line toward the wreck. Our first view, looking straight down at her bow, shows her bowsprit. This is a beautiful ship. All of her details are perfectly intact. Her bowsprit is still out, proud away from her bow. Laying laterally across underneath her bow, we can see her jib boom. Notice how the starboard anchor is rigged to be rapidly deployed. Her port anchor is attached close to the hull. It was a secondary anchor not used as often as the other. And you can see it's curved and conformal to her hull. This is to make her more streamlined and narrow to fit through the locks that she went through as part of her canal work. As we examine the anchor a bit closer, we notice a layer of muscles. These muscles have filtered the water and this is the reason why we can see 100 and over 100 feet in Lake Huron these days. Swimming up into the hull, we see masses of tangled rigging where it's fallen to the deck, and the anchor handling windlasses with their chains leading forward to the anchors. Directly above those is her bell, an iron one, mounted in a swinging frame that swings as easily today as it did when she sank. Swimming rearwards, we pass over one of her cargo holds, blocked with the wreckage for some of her spars and her rigging. The ship rests peacefully today on the bottom as we swim by, but we can only imagine the surprise and the horror on the crew's face when they realize they were run over by another ship and sinking quickly into the frigid waters of Lake Huron. Swimming aft, we can see additional details of her, such as this boom crutch used to hold one of her booms in position when not in use. We see the base of one of her masts with a bilge pump mounted directly in front of it and with a protective railing around its base with belaying pins still in place. The rearmost cargo hold hatch is gone, and we can easily see her cargo laying in the bottom of her hold with a ladder going down, which would have given access to this area during loading and unloading operations, which would have been carried out by hand. 
Swimming further aft, we can see that she's badly damaged. This is a combination of the damage due to the collision which sank her, and by her striking the bottom stern first as she sank. As we swim around Typo, we're very aware of the human cost of her loss. Four sailors still remain on this vessel, and some of the remains are still visible. We show ultimate respect to these as we swim by them. Her details of construction are obviously visible to us. We can see the knees which connect her ribs to her deck, and we can see the centerboard trunk visible on the left here. Blue water beckons from above and leads us to an easy exit hole through her forward cargo hatch. One last look at the knees connecting her decks to her ribs and into the blue water we swim. Looking down at her deck, we can easily imagine how she looked to a sailor standing aloft in a cross tree, looking down at her deck as he looked at the ship that he served. We take one last look at the ship as it is time for us to go back to civilization. At 106 feet of water we pass by the top of the mast and then we decompress before we come up. Thank you for watching this video and we hope to see you on our next adventure.